Well, your new show is called Star Talk. It's on uh, Nat Geo, 11 o'clock on Sunday. Yeah, right? Sunday night. Okay. Yeah. What's like a perfect guest for you on yours? Because you can't have Neil Tyson on, unfortunately. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Who, what's a perfect so, guest? Uh, for, for me, you? a perfect guest is someone who you would have had no idea had a tender geek underbelly. That during <laughs> wait a <laughs> second, Pat, please don't do the stroking motion. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> do that. no, That's too tender. No, they're That's too tender. No, for example, yes. This season, uh, we I, I have David Crosby, and maybe you didn't know. I certainly didn't. That. His, all his early life, he was a rabid fan of science fiction oh, before really? he ever wrote a note of music or song. And how, I how knew about his underbelly, but I didn't know that it was actually <laughs> a geek underbelly. So I don't know how else, who, what, does anyone else, would anyone else ask him that or care about it? I cared about that. Because mm -hmm. he, he said that's how he gets to think about tomorrow. And who are the people who think about tomorrow if not science fiction writers? Well, I, you know, I'm a big fan of science fiction. I read a lot when I was a kid, and it also a lot of popular science. I read a lot of Sagan when I was younger. Oh, yeah, younger. okay. Uh -huh. And um, I'm super excited about Water on Mars. Yeah, it's good. Okay? It's good. Now, it's good. <clears throat> is there any hope? Is liquid, liquid water on Just Mars? Yeah. Liquid. So is there any hope for life? Do you think we'll find life within our own solar system? Because anywhere water here, there's life there. Yeah, so follow the water is the mantra of NASA. Follow the liquid water. And anywhere on Earth where there's liquid water, there is life. And uh, even the Dead Sea, you know, it's got microbial life. That, that's evidence that the people who named the Dead Sea didn't have a microscope. <laughs> because they would say, hey, there's stuff like doing the backstroke in the pond water here. Mm -hmm. So, so... Water, liquid water, it's, yes, it's a bias, and it's, an under, it's a recognized bias, but uh, why not look for what we know, life as we know it? So water on Mars is water on Europa. Europa is one of the moons of Jupiter, yeah. kept warm by the gravitational stress, the undulations of the... <laughs> Again, you're getting close to the tender underbelly. <laughs> you're getting tender. See, this is why you make science, you make science kind of sexy, I gotta no, say. No. So, science so. is naughty with Neil Tyson. <laughs> that's a good, that's not a bad show. That could be your next show. The, the universe after hours. That's yeah, why. Exactly, exactly. So, so the, the, the gravity from Jupiter is stressing the shape of Europa, along with other moons tugging on it. Mm. And so that shape, uh, undulates and it's pumping energy into it, melting the ice. It is well outside of the Goldilocks zone, yet and it's yet kept there's warm. liquid water yet there. There's liquid what water. about Saturn's Enceladus? Uh, Encel and, Enceladus, yeah. Enceladus. That's like they're saying now that it might have a absolutely global ocean of water underneath its crust yeah. of ice. So it is one of many of what we call the icy moons uh, of, of the outer solar system. Yeah. And if it's kept, if you have an ocean that's been liquid for billions of years, come on. Oh my, come on, come on. Come on, space uh, whales. <laughs> space whales. I, 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 as I've said, Many times I want to go ice fishing on Europa, see what <laughs> swims up to the camera lens and licks it. Now, and and it, again, it's my but my favorite part is if you find life on Europa, what do you call it? And of course, you'd have to call it Europeans, right? That's what. <laughs>